Welcome back to Learning Solidity. In today's tutorial, I'll be covering a topic which I've seen crop up quite a lot recently, and that's essentially sending Ether from one contract to another. I'm also going to cover the basic principles of sending Ether from one address to a contract, as well as sending Ether from an address, a contract back to an address. Now to jump straight into this, I've already created two contracts. Now the first is going to be Ether Transfer To, and the second is Ether Transfer From. First, what we're going to do is send Ether from an address to a contract. I know what you're probably thinking, all contracts have addresses, which is true, they do, but not all addresses have contracts. So in our Ether Transfer 2, we're going to add two functions. Now, the first is basically allowing us to do something if Ether is ever sent to this contract directly, and that is known as basically a fallback function. Now with our fallback function, it's a very simple definition of a function that can kind of capture Ether transactions coming into us. So for instance, if you wanted to send Ether to a contract, you wouldn't actually have to invoke any functions or anything like that. You could simply just state the contract's address and send Ether to it. So to define our fallback function, all we need to do is state function. Now with the fallback function, it has no name. So you have an open close brackets. Again, you wouldn't have any parameters. Let's make it pay, uh, public and make it payable. And that's simply our fallback function. We don't actually need any functionality in that for now, but we will in the sort of later contract. So now we have our fallback uh, function set up. We're going to create a balance function. So we're simply going to say function get balance. Now just a tip, don't call it balance because if you do, you'll have a bit of a conflict of naming with the identifier balance or the reserved word or actually I don't know if it's a, just a generic member of all objects, but either way, don't call it balance. <laughs> now we're going to call make this public and we're also going to return an unsigned integer. Now to return on balance, we can actually reference the actual address of the contract by basically creating an address and passing this as to the constructor. And what I mean by that is simply state return. We don't have to obviously do return for this, but address this. And now this or the contract where this is held, you now are in the scope of being able to access things like the balance. You can send stuff to it. You can make calls to it and you can do anything that you could essentially do with a standard address. So all we want to do for this is find the balance. And that is as simple as it is. Now let's give this a very quick test. So let's call the ether transfer to, let's create the contract. Now, first things first, we're going to check the balance. Hopefully it should be zero, which it is fantastic. Now we're going to um, call the fallback method with a single ether. So, that seems to have worked fine. Just a side note, the value that we're sending is one ether, which is 100 way, or we, I don't know how to actually pronounce that. And we're actually, when we call balance, it's a balance of way and not ether, because ether has several decimal places, which is what we is way, or someone please correct me on how to actually pronounce that. Um, and when we actually check a balance, it will actually be like one, zero, 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 <clears throat> sorry, or how many zeros are required. So if we call our get balance, obviously now this will be one. So if we then send another ether to the fallback method, call get balance again, hopefully if everything's gone well, it should be two. Okay, so we can send ether to this contract and we can also verify the balance of it. Let's expand on that now. Let's, instead of sending ether to it directly, let's send ether to a contract and get the contract to forward that ether on to our other contract. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can reference the Ether Transfer to contract. We can either reference it by the address directly, but referencing it by the address doesn't give us access to the functionality of it. You can use um, the call um, attribute on an address, but it's not really advised. Now, there is two other ways that we can essentially do this. and. What I'm going to do is first cover the way that we're actually going to implement and then I'll just quickly cover the way you could do it alternatively. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate the Ether Transfer 2 contract within our contract. So first things first, let's define um, Ether Transfer 2. We're going to make this private and we're just simply going to call it instance. Now we're going to create a constructor that instantiates that on construction. So function ether transfer from we're going to make it public and that's it 
So with our instance, we are now just going to simply instantiate this by simply saying instance new ether transfer to. And now we have an instance reference. So when you instantiate a new object like that, it will actually be assigned a contract or an address on the network. So now that that is essentially its own contract, we can interact with that directly now. Another way to do it, and I'm just going to show you the very basic example. I'll leave it commented out just in case you actually want to do it yourself. So we can do instance equals ether transfer to. Now within the constructor, even though there is no constructor or no, or no constructor defined, we can now simply state an address. So if we knew the address of the ether transfer to that was already pre-existing, we can just simply state something like address and then something like my address or this. And then we actually have a referenced instance instead of one that we've constructed ourselves. But like I said, I'm going to leave that commented out because one that'll fail straight off the bat because the instance this for that address is actually ether transfer from and will cause errors. So now we have our instance created, we can now interact with it. So similar to the part last function, um, we're going to find the balance of this contract. So let's function get balance public returns unsigned integer, which is simply just going to be return address this dot balance. Now let's say we want to get the balance of the ether transfer to from the ether transfer from contract. So let's simply state function get balance of instance public returns an unsigned integer again. Now the only difference that we're going to do this time is that we can actually pass the instance to address instead. So we could simply state um, address underscore instance balance. But we could also use the functionality that's pre-existing in the ether transfer to as well. So I'm going to comment that one out and we're simply going to do for this one return instance dot get balance. And that's two ways essentially of being able to find the balance. Now the next thing we're going to do is have a sort of, a, I'm not going to call it a gateway, but more of a bridge. So essentially any time that someone passes ether to ether transfer from, it's going to instantly pass it to ether transfer to. And we're going to do that using the fallback method again. So function, nothing there, public, payable. Now we want to pass all this ether that we've just received onto the next co or onto the uh, ether transfer to contract. So we can do that by simply stating address underscore instance dot send and then simply state the value of ether that we're going to be sending. Now we've received, or well, we don't know how much we've received, but the message will basically identify how much ether we've received. So message.value is how much ether we've received and we're simply passing that straight on to the ether transfer to contract. So if I clear that and create the ins the ether transfer from contract, hopefully everything's gone well. If I get the balance for the current ether transfer from contract, it's going to be zero. If I do the balance of the ether transfer to function, that should also be zero. Now, let's start sending ether. So if I send one ether, which should arrive at the the fallback function for the ether transfer from, the ether transfer from function is simply just going to pass the ether straight up to ether transfer to. So if all's gone well, if I get the balance now for ether transfer from, it should be zero. And it is. Now if I check the balance of ether transfer to, we have one ether. We see we can just verify that by incrementing it again by one. Or actually I think I just sent two. Either way, this should now be three. And the get balance should still be zero. And there we have it. Now, obviously, we could just forward this value on to the person that we've sent this. Um, so, for instance, if I state something along the lines of uh, send, uh, message dot sender, which is an address dot send message dot value, and therefore just returning the amount of ether directly to the person who sent it. Now, it's obviously not like useful. But it's a great way if you don't want that contract to receive any ether at all. And that in a nutshell is 
how to basically transfer Ether around the network from an address to a contract, a contract to another contract, and a contract back to an address. Now, if you found this tutorial useful, give it a like. If you would like to stay up to date with all my other tutorials and when I release them, click the subscribe. If you have any questions or would like to make any comments because of something I've done wrong, which is probably quite frequently, leave a comment in the box down below. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.